In this video, we're going to learn about light. Now, light is waves, and waves have two main properties uh, that we need to address first. They are wavelength and frequency. So if we look at this wave on top, this wave has a short wavelength, which is the distance between the peaks. Um, we can say it also has a very high frequency because it is going up and down really fast. Um, on the other hand, this wave down here has a low frequency and a longer wavelength. Those two properties of frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to one another. And we can see these long wavelength radio waves. Um, they have a very low frequency and you might be aware that radio waves are pretty much harmless. Uh, on the other hand, as we move towards higher frequency and shorter wavelength, uh, we get to more harmful radiation like ultraviolet, uh, which damages your skin, uh, X-rays, which of course, um, you know, you, you would shield yourself from X-rays whenever you're having an X-ray taken of uh, a potential fractured bone. Uh, and gamma radiation, actually, gamma rays are um, the product of radioactive decay, uh, which we all know to be careful of, uh, to avoid. Um, so as I mentioned, wavelength and frequency are inversely related to each other. And actually, uh, their product for any wave is always going to be the speed of light, which is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Um, trouble is, I might have kind of lied. Um, waves, uh, sorry, light behaves as waves, but light also behaves as particles. And there is this duality that exists where they, where light behaves both as waves and as particles. And we can prove the particle-like nature of wave through the photoelectric effect. You see, um, if light has enough energy, it can uh, knock electrons off the surface of a metal. That's actually why in light, uh, metals look shiny. It's actually that you're seeing electrons getting pushed off the surface of the metal by the light. But what is it that causes light to um, have enough energy? For example, if you just turn on a light and shine it really brightly, is that going to result in electrons being knocked off the surface of a metal? Well, not necessarily. So here's an example. We have this model here of um, a red light um, and it's shining brightly. That's why we have five lines here. It's shining brightly on a surface of a metal and we don't see any electrons being knocked off the surface of the metal. So if this is a, uh, if this is a wave, if light is only acting as a wave, you'd think that just cranking up the intensity should result in there being enough energy in that light to cause this ionization to occur. I will tell you that um, if this amount of light, if this intensity of light is insufficient to uh, knock electrons off the surface of the metal, any intensity of the red light will not be sufficient. By contrast, look, we have the same intensity of blue light and it is knocking electrons off the surface of the metal. In fact, even a very low intensity of the blue light is enough to knock an electron off the surface of the metal. Well, the rate of electrons being emitted is lower here when there's low intensity, but at least you get some. Um, and then when there's a higher intensity, you get a, a faster rate of electrons being ejected. So this indicates that it's not about the intensity of the light here. It's not about the intensity of the light that indicates the energy of the light. It's something else. Well, how do red and blue light differ? They differ in their wavelengths and frequencies and indeed also their energies because energy is actually related to wavelength and frequency. More on that in a moment. You see, what we're getting to is that light exists actually as individual particles known as photons. And the energy of the light is really just uh, based on the energy of each photon. It is independent of how bright and how intense the photons uh, collectively come off as. Um, each photon has its own energy. Um, a bright light that's more intense We'll just have more photons per second but if none of those photons has enough energy to ionize a metal then the metal won't ionize no matter how bright 
the light is, no matter how many photons are being shot at it per second. Here's our equation. The energy of light is equal to h nu, which is the Planck's constant times the frequency, and that is also equal to Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength, hc over lambda. So let's put this into a problem. A lithium atom has a very weak hold on its outermost electron, um, and it will release that outermost electron if it is struck by um, a photon having just 8.64 times 10 to the negative 22nd joules of energy. What we're going to do is we're going to prove whether or not a photon uh, that's in the blue range of the visible spectrum at 465 nanometers has enough energy to ionize the lithium atom. So we first need to convert our nanometers uh, into meters. Um, and what we find is that 465 nanometers is equal to 4.65 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Um, and we need to do that because um, our C, our speed of light, um, is in meters per second. So next we'll use this equation, E equals HC over lambda. Um, H, this Planck's constant, um, we're going to see that the joules, oh, sorry, the seconds uh, and the inverse seconds from the speed of light cancel out. We'll also see that the meters in uh, the speed of light and the meters in the wavelength cancel out. And that leaves us with only seconds on the right, which is a measurement of energy. Uh, sorry, it leaves joules on the right side, which is a measurement of energy, which is what we want. Um, and what we find is that the energy of the photon with a wavelength of 465 nanometers is equal to 4.27 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So if we compare this easily, this photon easily has enough energy to ionize a lithium atom. And if you want a greater rate of ionization, then crank up the, um, the intensity of the light by all means. But even one photon will have enough energy to cause um, a lithium uh, atom to ionize. Now, if we change this from 465 nanometers to something quite a bit longer, um, we'd have something of significantly lower energy. And if we were off by you know, a factor of a thousand, if we changed it by that much, then perhaps that uh, light, no matter how intense, would not be sufficiently uh, energetic to ionize the lithium atom. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. Feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.